sa 6% ang unemployment uh, rate sa ating pag- Apat na milyong Pilipino ang nawala ng trabaho nung nakaraang taon sa kasagsaga ng COVID-19 pandemic. Pamilya, nadagdagan pa ang bilang ng mga walang trabaho sa bansa. Tumaas sa 5.3% ang unemployment rate nung Agosto. 1.93 bilyon Pilipino ang walang trabaho sa ngayon, basa datos ng Philippine Statistics Authority. Ay, 27 milyong Pilipino na ang nawala ng trabaho sa gitna ng pandemya base sa datos ng Social Weather Stations OSWS. Record high ito mula noong March 2012. Years have passed and Dora, our favorite explorer, has grown up. She has just graduated from college and is ready to enter the workforce by looking for a job. Let's see how Dora will face her journey to adulthood. Hola, I'm Dora the Unemployed. I'm a fresh graduate from the University of the Philippines Baguio, and this is my friend, Boots. Today, we are going to explore to find a job because I'm currently unemployed. Are you willing to join us in this journey of finding a job? Great. Unemployment is really a big problem in the Philippines, right Boots? Um, but what is unemployment, Dora? How about you guys? Do you know what unemployment is? Unemployment is a macroeconomic problem that refers to a situation where individuals are actively seeking for employment but are unable to find a job. The official unemployment definition comes from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, which states that people are classified as unemployed if they do not have a job, have actively looked for work in the prior four weeks, and are currently available for work. And I am part of labor force who was reported as 1. Without work, 2. Currently available for work, and 3. Seeking for work. Does that mean that you're still a part of the labor force, even though you're unemployed? Correcto, because the labor force is the sum of both employed and unemployed. Wow, that is amazing, Dora. Boots, did you know that unemployment is considered to be a key measure of the health of the economy? In what way, Dora? Because unemployment indicates people's capacity or incapacity to find meaningful employment and make a positive contribution to the economy's productive output. It means that more unemployed people in the labor force leads to a lower overall economic productivity. Oh no! You should be employed as soon as possible for you to contribute to the economy, Dora. You're right, Boots. Come and help us throughout this journey. But Dora... Has there been a time when unemployment was suddenly so high? 
Why, yes, Boots. There have been multiple events throughout history, such as pandemics or wars, which led to a sudden increase or decrease in unemployment. However, the most well-known event which brought a massive increase in unemployment would be the Great Depression. I've heard of that before, Dora, but I never understood what happened. You see, Boots, the Great Depression was a global event which lasted from 1929 to 1941, stemmed from a sudden crash in the United States stock markets. At the time, many citizens loaned money from banks to invest in rising companies. So when the stock market crashed, most of the population tried to sell all of their stocks at once. This meant that those who could not sell their stocks in time, a very large portion of the population at the time did not have the money to pay for the loans they owed to banks, leading to such crushing debts. Banks also quickly started to fail after a few years, decreasing the amount of money people and companies could loan. Oh no! But what happens then, Dora? Once banks started to fail, comparatively less money started to circulate in the economy. This meant that households had less money to purchase goods, meaning demand started to fall. This lack of demand caused many companies to shut down, and those that survived likely had to lay off a large number of their workers. Unemployment rates reached as high as 25% in 1933, and this didn't affect only the United States. At the time, the United States was an important part of the global economy. This massive economic crisis affected those who relied on loans from the USA, as well as countries that imported a large quantity of goods from them as well. The standard of living experience around the world started to drop during this period of time. That's horrible. But Dora, how did they ever come back from such an economic turmoil? It is said that the impacts of the Great Depression started to lessen after President Franklin Roosevelt implemented a program called the New Deal in 1933, which created several agencies to help the unemployed and raise standards of living, i.e. job searching, providing electricity, allowing the workers to unionize when seen fit, unemployment insurance, and many other government agencies which seek to alleviate the effects of future economic crisis. However, it is said that the effects on unemployment was only truly squashed when the country started to mobilize their workforce for the start of another world war. Wow, Dora, there's so much to unpack there. We really have to learn about what went wrong in previous economic turmoils if we want to understand where they went wrong and where we could improve. The last thing we would want is to go through what happened almost a hundred years ago. Correcto! Now come on Boots, let's go find out about our next topic. Do you know that there are four main sources of unemployment? Are you familiar with them? If not, then listen to my discussion as I introduce to you the four main sources of unemployment. Economists describe four main sources of unemployment, namely the frictional, cyclical, seasonal, and structural unemployment. With that, let's start the discussion by describing frictional, a type of unemployment that results because it takes time for workers to search for the jobs that best suit their tastes and skills. For example, after Maria graduated from business school, it took her a few weeks to find a job as a financial analyst since all the companies she applied for wanted employees who already had experience in the industry. During this period, she will be frictionally unemployed. Second, cyclical is the unemployment associated with the recessions and expansions, a type of unemployment where labor forces are reduced as a result of business cycles or fluctuations in the economy. For example, 
COVID-19 pandemic. The economy slowed severely in 2020 because of the COVID-19 pandemic due to consumers following the stay-at-home policy and worldwide quarantine, causing numerous businesses to lay off employees. As a result, a lot of businesses were shut down and temporarily closed their operations. Third, seasonal unemployment. These are seasonal jobs that became unemployed when demand for labor decreases. This typically occurs during holiday seasons or due to weather changes that will require an increase of manpower or laborers. For example, it's Christmas season. SM supermarkets will hire additional employees for this season since there is a high demand for goods and services that will require a number of laborers in this period. However, after the Christmas season, their contracts are done and people will be left unemployed. Lastly, structural occurs when there is a structural change in the economy, such as the development of a new technology or industry. For example, Anna pioneered electronic banking with the best security features. Since electronic banking is convenient for consumers, this may result in banks losing clients. And as for George, a bank teller could lose his job, making him structurally unemployed. Additionally, the natural rate of unemployment is the normal rate of unemployment around which the unemployment rate fluctuates. Furthermore, the unemployment rate is higher than the natural rate during a recession. However, if the natural rate is higher than unemployment, then there is an economic expansion. Wow! This is interesting, Dora. Now, I know the four main sources of unemployment. What are again the four main sources of unemployment? Frictional, cyclical, seasonal, and structural. Correct. Come on, Boots. Let's continue our journey. Hola! Boots and I are looking for a job here. Yeah, and you guys should come with us. Boots, do you know that unemployment can either be voluntary or involuntary? But Dora, what kind of unemployment is it when someone leaves their own job to look for another one? And the person doesn't accept the pay or conditions that come with their job, and then they look for a different or a higher paying job. Frictional unemployment usually falls under voluntary unemployment. Hmm, I still feel a little confused. Think of it like a fruit market where we're the seller and companies are the buyers. The apples I'm selling cost five coins all over the market, and the sellers are willing to buy them at that price. However, I want to sell them for six coins starting tomorrow, so I tell my usual customers about it before I leave the market for the day. By the next day, I'll be looking for customers to buy my apples for six coins. If no one wants to buy my apples, I could change my fruits into oranges and set the price at six coins or whatever price the market wants. Gee, thanks, Dora. I think I understand it now. Boots, look! It's the company I want to apply to. Vamanos, amigos. Let's talk to the hiring manager. Dora, wait. Did you bring your resume? Of course, Boots. It's in my backpack. That's impressive, Dora. Thanks, Boots. Swiper, no swiping. Swiper, no swiping. Swiper, no swiping. Swiper, no swiping. Oh, man. Swiper, why did you steal my resume? I needed a resume to look for a job.
Pras picture is on that resume, they would know right away that it's not yours. Oh! Right. I was just so worried about not finding a job again. I already gave out all of my resumes last week, and no one has called me yet. What happened to your previous job, Swiper? I got laid off from the car selling company. That sector has been in a bad spot since oil prices started to rise. Oh no! It looks like Swiper is experiencing involuntary unemployment. Dora, what do you mean by involuntary unemployment? It means that workers like Swiper are unable to get a job, even if they accept average pay and it's because of cyclical unemployment. The sector he's trying to enter has a low demand for jobs right now. I'm so sorry for swiping your resume, Dora. I'm going to have to make a new resume now. Hopefully, I can get a job in the public services sector. Do you know what are the causes of unemployment, Boots? Job searching is one of the factors that contribute to some unemployment in economies. Finding the right jobs for workers is the process of job search. If all employees and all jobs were identical, and all employees were equally qualified for all positions, then finding a job would not be difficult. But this is not the case. Since workers vary in their preferences and skill sets, jobs vary in their requirements, and information about job prospects and openings is slowly shared throughout the numerous businesses and households in the economy. So, searching for the perfect job is indeed a problem. What can we do, Dora? The natural rate of unemployment in the economy can be decreased if policy can shorten the time it takes unemployed people to obtain new employment. In an instance, the government initiatives make numerous attempts to make the job search easier. One option is by using government-run employment organizations, which disseminate details about open positions. Public training programs are another option, and they're designed to shift workers from lagging to booming industries, which would be made easier, and disadvantaged people will be assisted in escaping poverty. But did you also know, Boots, that there is also one government program that unintentionally increases the amount of frictional unemployment in the economy, called unemployment insurance. This initiative is intended to give employees some security from losing their jobs. Advantages are only those who lost their jobs because their prior employers no longer needed their abilities or compensated for their unemployment. This unemployment insurance increase the unemployment rate if it offers protection. This happens because the unemployed put less effort into their job search and are more inclined to reject unappealing job offers because their unemployment benefits end when they start a new job. Additionally, since unemployment insurance lessens the burden of unemployment, employees are less likely to demand assurances of job security while negotiating the terms of their employment with employers. Anyways, Boots, are you familiar with the labor market? Um, it's the first time that I've heard about it. What is it, Dora? Because, Boots, minimum wage laws also play a major part in the increasing unemployment rate. The amount of labor supplied increases and the quantity required decreases in comparison to the equilibrium level when a minimum wage rule forces the wage to remain above the level that balances supply and demand. This means there is a surplus in the labor market. Oh, that's a little complicated for me, Dora. I know, right, Boots? 
This just means that if the wage is maintained for whatever reason above the equilibrium level, then unemployment is the outcome. Needless to say, the need for job searching is not a result of pay being insufficient to balance the supply and demand of labor. Workers look for the jobs that best match their interests and abilities when job search is cited as the cause of their unemployment. When the wage is higher than the equilibrium level, however, more labor is supplied than is needed, which results in unemployment as people wait for positions to become available. I understand now. So when the minimum wage is above equilibrium, the amount of labor supply is greater than the demand. Right, Dora? Ooh, you're a fast learner, Boots. But did you also know that there are also unions that collectively bargain to the minimum wage? Oh, that's interesting. Right? These unions are a group of people acting together in the hope of compromising on the terms of employment, also called collective bargaining. When a union negotiates with a company, it demands greater pay, benefits, and working conditions than the company would provide if there were no unions. But when the union and firms don't reach an agreement, then the union could organize a strike or the withdrawal of labor from the firm. Ah, just like the jeepney strikes. Yes, Boots, because the union of jeepney drivers is bargaining about the increase of minimum fare and the government rejects these, the jeepney drivers often withdraw service and form a strike. Anyways, Boots, speaking of the minimum wage, there is also a theory called efficiency wages that suggests that if wages are greater than the equilibrium level, businesses function more effectively. Consequently, it might be advantageous for businesses to maintain high pay, even when there is a labor surplus. So, it's better that wages are higher, right? In the midst of labor shortage, businesses are prohibited from cutting wages by minimum wage regulations and unions. According to efficiency wage theory, such a restriction on businesses is unnecessary since, in some circumstances, business may benefit from maintaining wages above the equilibrium level. So yes, Boots, efficiency wage theory's original idea is that raising salaries may boost a company's profitability by improving employee productivity. Oh, I get it now, Dora. Unemployment is really complicated, huh? I hope unemployment is now clearer to you. Will you join me on the next part so I can explain more about it? Esto listo! Now we're going to discuss how the unemployment rate is measured. Do you have any idea how? Oh, then let me tell you what I know about it. The first thing you need to do is to divide the number of unemployed people to the entire labor force. After that, you will have to multiply it to 100. Remember, the labor force is the sum of employed and unemployed persons. Conceptually, it is the number of people who are either working or actively looking for jobs. Say it with me. Unemployment rate is equal to the number of unemployed divided by labor force and then multiplied by 100. Suppose that the number of unemployed people is 500, and the labor force consists of 3,500 people in total. The unemployment rate will then be 14.29%. Muy bien. Why is this important again? Good question, Boots. Let's now move on to the significance of the unemployment rate. Do you have any idea about the importance of it? 
Yes, unemployment related data can be used to illustrate macroeconomic developments spanning from a certain period of time. Despite the fact that no single figure can fully represent all the intricacies in the state of the labor market, it is regarded as one of the most significant economic indicators. As we all know, losses in salaries and incomes for workers and their families, an increase in inequality, a hostile atmosphere for welfare reform, and the social costs of increasing crime and deteriorating health are all consequences of a higher unemployment. And by using the unemployment rate data, the government can develop public policy initiatives to improve the economy and make personal and social repercussions. In simple words, the rate of unemployment serves as a good indicator in determining the health of the economy when setting policies. Correcto. It also sheds light on the economy's unused resources and spare capacity. Yo, entiendo. One more thing though. Are there any indications when the rate is high or low? Hmm, let's ask our amigos if they know. Do you guys have any idea what the economic indicators are when there is a high unemployment or a low unemployment rate? All right, let me tell you. When the economy grows, Unemployment often declines as businesses hire more employees to satisfy rising demand. Typically, unemployment rises as the economy grows less active. Inflation also has an inverse relationship with unemployment. When it rises, unemployment drops. Higher unemployment equates to lower inflation. Increases in the unemployment rate are also correlated with declines in real GDP since employed workers contribute to the production of goods and services, while unemployed workers do not. The term for this inverse link between GDP and unemployment is Aukun's Law, named after Arthur Aukun, the economist who initially studied it. The latest Labor Force Survey said that the unemployment rate in the Philippines decreased to 5% in September from 5.3% in August and 8.9% in the same month in 2021. This translated to 1.8 million fewer unemployed individuals. I think that high inflation and reopening of classes and businesses contributed as a factor in the slight decrease in the unemployment rate. That's right, Dora. National statistician Dennis Mapa attributed the low unemployment rate to the reopening of classes and the expansion of businesses as the economy further reopened. It was also influenced by the opening of seasonal jobs during the bear months. And remember that when unemployment rate is high, the number of people looking for work significantly exceeds the number of jobs available. In other words, the supply of labor is greater than the demand for it. Oh no, that is very alarming. Who can we ask for help to solve that problem? Who do we ask for help when we don't know which way to go? We ask the government. Have you encountered the word fiscal policy? I think I've heard it somewhere. Hmm, let me think for a while. Aha! Fiscal policy. It is mostly associated with money supply, Dora. Correcto. But do you know that this policy is beneficial in reducing the unemployment rate? Really? How? 
In order to reduce unemployment, the government should adopt an expansive fiscal policy. Since fiscal policy can lower unemployment rate through increasing economic growth and aggregate demand by means of lowering the taxes while raising government spending. Because reducing the taxes can enhance disposable income, which encourages consumption growth and raises aggregate demand. More so, if firms reduce more, there will be an increase in demand for employees as a result of an increase in aggregate demand, as long as there is space capacity in the economy. Additionally, stronger economic growth and higher aggregate demand will result in businesses to stabilize their operations, which means that there would be a low chance of job losses in the industry. This is my first time hearing that the fiscal policy has a function like this. This is very informative. But Tora, who implements the fiscal policy? The central bank. Is it the BSP in the Philippines and the Fed in the US? See, you are right, Boots. I'm happy that you are now familiar with these concepts and terms regarding unemployment.
Thank <laughs> you.